You guys have probably been in a situation where you're playing survival and you just cannot figure out how to get that iron that you need so bad. Welcome back guys and this time I'll be showing you a solution to that exact problem. And it's Minecraft video, I know it's been a long time since I did something in gaming but I recently started playing Minecraft a lot again so yeah let's just get straight into it and this is how you can make your very own iron farm super easily with minimum materials and it's just look at the material I'll show you um what you need for this build is you need at least two stacks of building materials you might need slightly less uh, you can use oak planks they work fine and you get them easily you need a stack of material that is resistant to fire that means lava will not burn it up cobblestone works best for this now you need a stone brick slab this is the most important you need at least three stacks of this maybe more because you need to cover pretty much everything with this to make it unspawnable for the golems you want at least half a stack of glass one water bucket one lava bucket three beds um any color bed uh, how does that matter you need just one hopper as i said come on guys at least get yourself five iron ingots from somewhere you only need one hopper for this build two chests uh a name tag you can get this from a mine shop or you can of course build it um you need a couple of torches for decoration if you would like and um three oak signs so now that you've got that out of the way let's get straight to the build now the first thing you want to do the absolute first thing is dig down about 10 blocks okay i would say go for 10 blocks to just to be safe right so if I click on F3 right now, I'm on Y64. So I'm just gonna dig a nice stair kind of pattern. It's pretty easy to dig and get to about Y54, right? Once you've done that, dig up about a 15 by nine kind of a rectangle, right? You wanna make it 15 by nine. So once you've cleared all that land and you've made a nice stairway, let's get to making the actual farm. So once you've cleared your land and you have your materials, you want to start off by, um, I would say, give it a gap of about one and start building a nice seven by seven kind of square. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You've got a seven like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And build like a kind of a square, a seven by seven kind of a square. Now this is where our villagers and our zombie will be. So inside it, make a smaller 3x3 three three square, kind of like this, uh, with the middle open. This is where our zombie will go. Now attach to it another 7x7 seven seven chamber. Uh, take it across over. There should be 7x7. Seven seven. Let me just count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, right? So this is where our lava will be, and this is basically the kill chamber for our golems, right? So once you've got that out of the way, I would suggest leave these two blocks open so you can get your villagers in from here. Uh, a boat will not fit through here. You can make a double staircase if you want to use a boat, but I would suggest you use a minecart. But if you're low on iron, you will have to use a boat, right? Now build this up... Uh, like at least a two for now um so that our villagers do not get out i'm going to go ahead and build it up do not build the inside because we still need to get our zombie in right so build this up though three blocks high now so that the insides are not too dark and no mobs spawn this is why i suggested using your uh torches Go ahead, place down your torches uh, on these three corners, and that should light it up sufficiently. Now, let's go ahead and make our kill chamber first. Uh, what, what you only want to do here is build it up to two steps, uh, like this, build it up two layers. Make sure this is with a fire-resistant material and your six blocks under the ground. It is really important that you comply with those parameters. So, um... I'm going to go ahead and build up this entire three lane, right? I made the wall a slight bit too short. I made it four blocks high. You can make it five just to be safe, right? 
now now you need to use your signs right so with the signs you want to choose a corner you can take this corner or that one i'm going to take this one place one uh leaving one gap from the center place one over here place one directly uh opposite to it like this and place one on either side here or here i'll just place it here like that okay this is where your lava will go take your lava bucket and drop your lava block over there uh there should be no problem the lava should be covered from all sides and this is where your iron golem will die right he will burn to death now punch a hole here this is where your hopper will go to place your hopper get out of your chamber right our hopper is around about over here okay there is our hole if you can see it See, this is where our hopper is meant to go. Do not do what I just did. I just ended up breaking my oak sign. So that was kind of stupid. Uh, oh, man. So, yeah. Do not end up doing that. Uh, just I, I would suggest you stop breaking it from the inside. So you do not make a mistake like that. Um, gonna go ahead. Because this can be fatal in survival. Like, I was in creative. So I survived. But in survival, you might have a bit of a problem while doing this. There it is. I'm not going to dig this. This is where my oak sign is. And um, over here, you want to build your chest now. So once you've got this, this is where your hopper will go. So build it down. And once the hopper is placed here, you want to put a double chest over here. A chest and a chest. Then get your hopper a crouch and place the hopper onto this. So, once the iron golem dies, all the ingots will go into this. To test if your model is working, go ahead, put something into your hopper, and it should end up inside your chest. Build a sort of staircase kind of thing so you can access it easily, and then cover up the rest of it. Now, that completes your machinery for your um, iron golem hopper, right? So your iron golems will get deposited, the ingots will get deposited into this chest once the golems die. Now to complete your kill chamber, take just one bucket of water and place it to the opposite side of your lava bucket. This will push all the golems into it. To test it, you can just stand AFK and you should be pushed into the corner over there. That completes our kill chamber, just one little detail left and... You need to add stone brick slab. This is extremely important. Add it all around the edges because this will make sure that the iron golem does not end up spawning on the top. Okay, this step is really important. Make sure you do not skip this because you do not want your iron golem spawning in some random place. Now, you want to do the same for this wood. Uh, line it. This is why I said maybe making your roof five blocks high. Might have been useful at this point uh, because in survival especially it would have made it much easier. Now you want to make sure you fill it in for this because we do not want the iron golem dropping in. For the water it does not matter because uh, he has to fall into the water, the golem. So let's go uh, leave the middle block open if you're in survival so you can get your zombie in, right? Basically, your zombie is going to drop through this, and that's how you're going to get your zombie to go in. To lock your zombie, put a temporary block here, break this then, and build it around. I would suggest you make this with glass so you can see your zombie at all times, like your villagers can see it. Although glass does obstruct, but I just like to make things with glass, right? Once you've got this, your this is your zombie locking area. And now you want to go ahead and get your zombie um, in survival. You can make a sort of stairway and get your zombie up in from the top. Make like stairs coming up here and then drop your zombie in from the top. It might be slightly difficult, but getting a zombie in, you should eventually be able to get your zombie, right? Since I'm creative, I'm just going to go ahead and get a zombie egg and put it here. Now, as soon as your zombie is in, you want to make sure you put a name tag onto it. Now, to put a name tag, you're going to need an anvil, right? Um, it doesn't matter if it's a chipped anvil. That just means it is used. So, go ahead, put down an anvil, and uh, I'll name it, suppose, Legend, and get that nice name for zombie, huh? And name your zombie. This step is extremely important, otherwise your zombie might despawn. So now that we have the zombie in place, 
time to prepare for our villagers. Go ahead and place their beds. Um, place it in a nice arrangement. You can place it however you want. I just like to place it in sort of a ninja star kind of a thing. Place three beds, leave the front open, and uh, you're almost ready to place the villagers. But do not do that right now, because as soon as you place them, in a short while, the golems will start to spawn. Before that, you want to cover the whole floor with these slabs. Again, as I said, this is to make sure that the iron golem does not spawn anywhere but in our kill chamber. And the slabs prevent it from spawning anywhere else except for in the kill chamber. So, let's go ahead and build... The whole area around this thing is built um it will not spawn above because we've made it down it should not spawn left or right if there are caves it might spawn so look out for that um you might also want to build this down uh with stone slabs just in case it decides to spawn inside your building so that should stop it from spawning there just put it wherever you can uh don't put it over here because the villagers will not be able to see the zombie then. So basically, you want to cover the entire area with your stone slabs. Like, cover this, cover that. Um, this might be slightly hard to cover. That's why every time you want to get in and out, you're going to have to break it and then place one over here. But you must place a stone slab because I cannot emphasize this enough. If you do not do so, then your iron golems will spawn anywhere and... That will actually mess up your iron farm. It will still work your farm, but the efficiency will be reduced greatly. It will be reduced by a lot. So um, once we've got the whole setup ready, um, we've got our villagers ready, almost ready. Uh, I mean, I have not put them in yet. Uh, break this. We have got our kill chamber ready. Yep, that is complete ready. We've got our chest. We've got a zombie. Now it's time to get your villagers. Now, this will be extremely hard in survival. I have tried it myself, but you will eventually be able to get them. Now, I, I suggest placing this up with glass so you can continuously see your villagers. Go ahead, spawn. Uh, oh, no. I, I accidentally spawned a baby. Shoot. Um, one, two, three. Um, let's skip ahead to where the iron golems start spawning. So we are back and the golems have started spawning, but there is a small glitch that you need to fix. Um, over here, you want to make sure that the slabs are on ground level. That means they are not at level with the beds, because if they are at level with the beds, the villagers will not be able to see the zombie and that will be a problem. So make sure that they are ground level and when the villagers are standing down, they see the zombie and panic. So... That was a bit of a thing that I had to fix. Uh, I also broke these walls and made it with glass so I can see my chamber and I can see my villagers as well. So I could see like both things at once, right? And um, yeah, so basically a golem should not spawn anywhere else. Now this design might be slightly glitchy and the golems might spawn once or twice inside walls. But they will die, and um, you can collect their ingots by going over there. But most of the golems will spawn inside our chamber, and as you can see right now, you can just stand here and open the chest. So far, we have 12 ingots and 2 poppies and this oak sign that I threw in there for no reason. But, uh, yeah, uh, let's go ahead and see how much iron it generates in one hour. So I'm going to go ahead and go AFK for exactly one hour. And I'm going to come back and see how much iron has been generated. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and take this iron to make the test absolutely fair. And uh, let's see how much iron is produced by this farm. As I said, it won't be the most efficient, but let's see how far it gets. So I'll see you after exactly one hour. One hour later. So it has been exactly one hour since I went AFK, and since then, well, uh, let's see how much we got. Um, okay, so we have just a little over uh, one stack of iron and 19 poppies. Again, it is not the most efficient farm, as I said, um, 
because of its uh, different design, I mean, I tried to make it with as limited materials as possible. I mean, I, I think I did a pretty good job of kind of, you know, um, limiting the materials, but that did affect its efficiency since the iron golems might spawn in walls and you do not get uh, any um, iron for that. So, yes, that is about it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you faced any kind of problem, make sure you leave it down in the comments below. I'll try getting back to you as soon as possible. And, yeah, I hope this works great for you. And you have your very own working iron farm that gives you iron every single hour. Thank you so much. Make sure you sub to the channel. Drop a like. And I'll see you in the next video.